Hello everyone, it is Mike Levin SEO helping you fight obsolescence in this Beat Back to Chaos of Windows 10 series. Step number eight, possibly the most important step, install Linux on Windows. Which brings us to the reason I'm shooting this with a camera instead of a screen capture piece of software because there's going to be a reboot. So what you do is you go into your start menu and you start typing PowerShell. And then you have to right click it because you're going to have to be in admin mode. So you might as well do that right from the start. Yes. And then you can get rid of that. And now there is a PowerShell and that font is entirely too small for these video purposes. So we'll go over here, we'll go to font, we'll give it a 20. 20 is probably pretty good, right? You can probably read that. We'll go full screen and we will type WSL space minus minus install. But wait, Mike, you said there's three very complicated steps. Well, they fixed it. So long as you have done all your system updates, Windows 10 is now capable of the same trick as Windows 11. So there you see it doing the stuff that I have talked about, activating the Windows subsystem, uh, downloading a kernel patch, applying the kernel patch, and now you see it downloading Ubuntu. It is almost certainly version 20.04. And uh, after it has been installed, it's going to ask you to reboot. So we'll go ahead and do that. Leading to the real reason, I'm, I'm shooting it on camera now. Of course, screen capture software, I couldn't get this and I want you to see it. This is the sprinkling of the magic fairy dust onto your computer and I might let this be one of those uh, long unedited sequences uh, continuous video shoots that I haven't really done for quite some time I've been doing either these very short videos of each step leading up to this or I've been doing these highly edited uh, they've really been single take but nonetheless highly edited in the sense that I had a PowerPoint or a Google slide deck already, and I basically just talked my way through a practiced script. And no, that's not for me. I much more like it in the genuine, here's the experience you can expect to have uh, style. So I'll just try and talk to fill it or I will rudely drink my coconut water here. All right. So this is really doing some deep changes to your system. Uh, by default, hypervisors are not turned on because they are kind of a, uh, even a, a surface area hacking vector you know, possibility. And, uh, oh, look, I'm not even going to touch anything. I just keep my hands away from it because all on its own, all by itself, it should, in a moment, pop that screen up. Again, this is why I'm shooting it with a camera because imagine trying to capture that moment with screen capture software. In fact, I, I did, and it was a uh, failure and you can't really do these things twice. So I reset the PC back to factory default again and went through the steps to get it back to this uh, pristine starting point for installing Linux. So I figure if you're gonna change your life to the degree of having command line interface Linux, Unix style command line interface in your life, right? you're making a big step forward in your life here taken up the timeless tools of tech, uh, you should has, also have a nice, pristine, uh, clean starting point. I'm tempted to not even have these two icons there. The only reason those icons are there is because, you know, generally you run software full screen, at least full screen in uh, this capacity here. 
It might not cover your taskbar, but you only let things show in your taskbar that are actually running. So away go the distractions of those uh, desktop icons, which are only there to provide the keyboard shortcuts to run this stuff, right? So again, it's a shortcoming of Windows, which is why I leave the icons on the desktop. So I get hot keys, but you know, that's fine. I guess this is not giving a perfectly fair representation because uh, most of you will be having it left in this smaller state. I'm going to hide those icons for now. I'm going to move them down here so you don't have to look at them as a distraction. This is the installation of Ubuntu, right? Right. So it's been downloaded. Uh, the hypervisor has been turned on in the background. The system has been restarted so that this, you know, deep, almost like top-level operating system, right? The operating system that controls all other operating systems. It's a, a headless, invisible one, and one of the several, because there's another one on there. There's Minix on there, a version of Unix that you don't know about, but it's used to remotely control your machine, all PCs, since, oh, I don't know, 2007 or so? I think it was the Sandy Bridge line of computers have had that installed. <laughs> so there's that. It's amazing how many different operating systems a modern computer has on it. This adds just one more. No, no, this adds just two more because the hypervisor has to count as one in Linux itself. But I ramble because I have the time to ramble, right? So it's been downloaded, the hypervisor's been turned on, and now Ubuntu is installing itself onto, you know, side by side with Windows. It is a Linux kernel that is going to be running next to a Windows kernel. There's something like a Windows kernel. You don't hear people say it that often because it's not hacked. There's not tons of versions of it like there is in the Linux world. You hear, I don't know, Windows API talked about quite a bit. DOS has gone away, right? There's no actual, you know, text-based operating system underneath Windows anymore that's exposed to users, at least. It boots right into Windows. Even the Mac has an underlying sort of text operating system in the sense of, uh, of Unix there. So in the modern world, things like in the DOS emulator, right? When you run a DOS window, a COM window, COM is running under Windows, as is PowerShell, uh, in a reversal of the way it used to be, at least on Windows. And so, you know, it's all under the management of, I guess, you know, a combination of the hypervisor now with this installed in the Win Windows API, but it manages things that, you know, that's why the WSL.exe program is still on the Windows side. It's a, you know, it's a Windows executable that manages the Linux instances that will be on your machine. Okay, so here we are. Now we can uh, give it a username, right? So it's going to be, uh, let's see, enter a new username. The tradition is to just use Ubuntu. For myself, I've been using other stuff, but for you folks, we'll do Ubuntu, and I'll just do use foo as the password, retype the password, foo. All right, so that right there is a uh, Linux command prompt, right? So we can just close out of that. There's no harm. You might be like, wait, what are you doing? You can't just close out of a boot booted computer, but the thing is now, Ubuntu is on your start menu. Right? You can just go like this and go, and there it is, and bring it up. And that's it. It's booted. It'll stay running, right? And uh, it's because it's Ubuntu, one of the typical things you do is sudo apt update as your first step. Foo. And it's going to hit the Ubuntu software repository and get all the latest of all the different softwares that are available uh, for Ubuntu. And then we can do 
sudo apt upgrade. And that will upgrade the 278 packages that can be upgraded. This is pretty much the same as doing a, an update, a system update after a uh, fresh install of Windows. It'll take a little while. And while that's going on, I guess I'll let that go in the background a little bit here. While I do this one last step, a bonus thing that I'll throw in while we're waiting. Uh, first, let's bring, not that we're going to be running it this way that much, because it brings it up through the COM window where you can't affect font size or truly go full screen. But nonetheless, it would be nice to pin it to your start bar. Right, so now it's on your start bar. And then we resize it to small. There you have it. Isn't that nice? This is the way to really, this is how you do Windows right. So uh, we'll go into the Microsoft Store. This is not necessary, I don't believe, anymore under Windows 11 because that Ubuntu install will put the terminal on your machine. In fact, I'm going to test by typing uh, terminal. Eh, you don't get a terminal. Let's try Microsoft Terminal. Nope, not on the machine. But if we were on uh, Windows 11, it very well might have been. So Windows Terminal. And there's two versions. There's a stable version and a preview version. I'm going to go for the preview. Why not, right? It's a living on the bleeding edge a little bit. It just will bring new features to you a little bit quicker than the other version. But what you want now is to have the unified Windows uh, terminal on your machine. And it's going to default to PowerShell. And there's a couple things you do here uh, while that's going on. I'll, I guess I'll just let it go like this, right? You can see that still run. But we always want to go into, well, first, before I even go to settings, I'll let you see. Now that you have Ubuntu here, it gives it as an option. Isn't that amazing? So that's doing an install. Is that going to keep you from logging in here? No, it's not, right? So there you are, logged in, and an update's going on over here. And this isn't going to stop that, right? And this is, you know... Linux terminal. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about getting onto Linux. We're not talking about replacing your desktop, right, with a Linux desktop. No, it's all desktops are the same. Who cares? Okay, so that's done there. That's the last time you ever really need to look at a COM window where you can't adjust font sizes, right? So we don't want PowerShell to ever come up, you know, as the default when we open these things. So we go to settings. And we say default it to Ubuntu, all right? And then uh, launch mode, full screen. This is what I'm talking about. Well, before I do that, I want to make sure I save, right? So when I talk about how I use screen one, right? Because remember, we've got our, our virtual desktops here. I go here and, well, let me hit this home. Terminal, right click, pin to start, go to start, make it small, drag it here, properties, control alt T, 
apply. Okay, you don't really have to hit apply if you're just getting ready to close it. We're on desktop one, control alt T. Bam, full screen Linux. On a larger font, control plus, no problem. And you got your commands like, you know, PWD for print working directory. We're in slash home slash Ubuntu, which is very typical. We have a text editor like, like Vim. I can give it a file name like hello.txt. Hello world, yay. And there you have it. Whoops, I can't quit out of a terminal that way. I quit out of Vim already that way. So I got my, oh, and if that happens, if it you get one of these ugly little things where it can't, we can't close it, at least it shows the white bar now so that you can X out of it. I had to go research for Control Shift W. Control Shift W closes up locked up full screen uh, terminals, but now you got a Linux terminal, ho, ho, ho. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, uh, hit the bell, uh, thumbs up the video, all that happy stuff. See you on the next vid.